Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. I went through my junk box and pulled out a whole bunch of boards to test on the audio analyzer so eventually I'll get around to these. But today we're going to look at a specific board here and let me dig it out. And here it is, the TDA 7267. This is actually the A version, TDA 7267A. They also have an 8-pin dual inline package. This is the 16-pin dual inline package. Same chip inside, they just use different packaging. All the pins on this side of the package are for heat sinking. They're grounded, used for heat sinking. I have a little copper heat sink on there. And I uh, will test this board on the audio analyzer. This chip, to me, at least the 8-pin package version of it, was a replacement for the LM386. A couple videos ago, I tested the LM386 on the analyzer to demonstrate its performance. And so I wanted to do this chip to make a comparison. I always wanted a chip that could deliver a little bit more power. It could handle 4 ohm loads. Didn't require a lot of parts. Something for battery power, like you could run it at 9 volts. I would say sub-12 volt voltages. And this chip fits the bill perfectly. Good output swing, can handle 4 ohm loads. If you remember, at 9 volts, 4 ohm loads on the LM386, output power actually dropped below the 8 ohm measurements. And that's because the very limited current of the LM386 and uh, well this one doesn't have that problem so I thought I would make a comparison video for it and I think I made a video a long time ago about this chip and uh, if it's any good I'll add it in the description it goes into more detail about this chip if you want to watch that but for now Let's hook it up to the Quantasylum audio analyzer and start getting some curves. You got the curves, I got the angles. Okay, everything is hooked up. Got the load there, audio analyzer. Let's get some measurements. Okay, my usual kickoff measurement at 1 kilohertz into an 8 ohm load. I'm running the amplifier at 9 volt supply right now. And because at such low supply voltages, the amplifier will be into clipping at 1 watt, which I would normally measure it. So I'm going to back it down to about half a watt, so it's not into clipping. And uh, like I always say, I like to see distortion less than 0.1. And we're certainly doing that here, just barely, you know, we're 0 0.08. So it's looking pretty good there. The amplifier has a gain of 32 decibels. It is a fixed gain amplifier. No external feedback to adjust that. All right, we got some curves for you here. First up is frequency response with an 8 ohm load. And what we're looking at here is the 20 hertz line and we're about 1.4 dB down. And that depends on the value of the output coupling capacitor. This is a single supply amp that it's not bridged, so it has a output coupling capacitor. The value of that's what dictates your low frequency roll-off. I'm using a 2200 microfarad cap, so that's the reason for that. At the high end of the spectrum, 20 kilohertz, or less than one-fifth of a dB down. I do have a low-pass filter on the input of this amplifier to block out the higher frequencies. So yeah, no real issues there on frequency response as expected with any solid-state amplifier. It'll be pretty flat depending on the components you use in the circuit. Power versus distortion. Operating the chip at 9 volts. And of course we have a 4 and 8 ohm test here, graphed. Pretty good. It's around 0.1%. 
both are pretty good so uh, it's almost load invariant here but as you get up higher you can see the 4 ohm starts to go slightly higher and the 8 ohm load which is the blue line is starting to clip around uh, 0.8 watts 800 milliwatts and at 1% we're at 1 watt 4 ohm starts to uh, go into clipping a little more gently and we reach the 1% at that's uh, probably about 1.6 watts compared with the LM386 you can see at 8 ohms we were at the 1% at 700 milliwatts in 4 ohms it actually dropped and it was at 2, 3, 4, 5 you know just shy of 6 100 milliwatts so yeah the uh, 7267 is doing much better the 4 ohm distortion is better on the TDA 7267 though the LM386 8 ohm distortion is close to the point 0.1 line as is the 7267 increasing the power supply voltage now to 12 volts you can see our power output has increased the 8 ohm blue line here we go into clipping and at 1% we're hitting about 1.8 watts if you remember the LM386 was doing just barely over 1 watt so definite improvement here now the LM386 I couldn't test 4 ohms at 12 volts because it was struggling badly at 9 volts but the TDA 7267 we can run it at 4 ohms at 12 volts though it is at right at the limit I would say and at 1% we're getting about 2.8 watts so not too bad at all if you wanted to you can increase the supply voltage of the TDA 7267 to say 15 volts and get about that same amount of power with an 8 ohm load frequency versus distortion at lower frequencies the distortion does increase quite a bit We're staying under 1% with 4 ohms and a little bit less with 8 and uh, we dip below the 0.1 line at just under 200 Hertz and uh, a little over 1 kilohertz we're going above that so that's why we were getting the numbers around 0.1 at 1 kilohertz that so you can see there and as the frequency increases up to 20 kilohertz you can see we're getting close to 1% again so certainly not spectacular or hi-fi performance what I would expect from a chip amp like this which is meant for lower voltages and even battery power use comparing with the LM386 had a similar distortion at lower frequencies but at higher frequencies it stayed pretty low only going to 0.2 percent so yeah the, actually that's a bright spot for the LM386 its distortion stayed low at higher frequencies though at those levels the harmonics would be out of the range of hearing so yeah doesn't really matter too much I guess there you have it the TDA 7267 audio amplifier chip as I mentioned, it gives you much better audio power output at a given impedance and supply as compared to the LM386. Bad news is they've been discontinued for a long time, but they're readily available on the secondary market. I don't know the deal with counterfeits or not, but I've always gotten authentic ones when I purchased them and tested them. I like that it doesn't need a whole bunch of external components to make it work so you can make something for smaller speakers or you know smaller battery powered projects and with that i thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one